Partner, it seems like the movie Groundhog Day. It seems like yesterday we did this, but it was actually 371 days ago in Blacksburg. We got together. Miami in the same situation. One more hurdle, and it's the title game. Well, Miami is ready for this ball game. I remember being on this field 30 years ago, and the feeling down there is electric. The players are ready. One game away from a championship opportunity, and that's what they're looking at. They've got the weapons. There's two guys in this game that are obviously Heisman Trophy candidates. I can tell you, Kenny Dorsey and Willis McGahee aren't thinking about that right now. The Hurricanes have had a lot of great quarterbacks and a lot of great running backs. These two guys at their positions may be the best at this level that have ever played here. That's saying a lot. On the other side for Virginia Tech, they come in with a 9-3 record. They did have an undefeated streak going, 8-0 of their own. They lost three in a row. They beat Virginia in their last outing. Only three coaches in football have been at their schools longer than Frank Beamer. He knows how to coach, and these guys are ready. I think Frank Beamer is the most underrated coach in all of college football. He is 0-5 against the number one ranked team. He is capable of beating the Hurricanes here. He's won two of the last three times they've played here in the Orange Bowl. They know how to block kicks. They know how to stop the run. They've got a running game with a dynamic duo that may be second to none. Well, when you talk about Suggs and Jones as a tandem, they are the best in the country. And for the Hurricanes to win this ball game, their tackling is going to have to be superb against those two. Virginia Tech in Miami presented by 1-800-CALL-ATT. Before we kick with a coach who's never lost a game is the third man in our team, Lynn Swan. Lynn. Thank you, Brett. Coach Coker, this is a big ball game. But if you had to hang your hat on one thing and you had a choice, a great offense or stopping Virginia Tech's run, which would it be? They've got two great running backs, a great running attack. Uh, we've got to stop their run. A lot of big things on the line in this ball game. How do you get your quarterback, Ken Dorsey, to focus on the task at hand? Well, he's a mature quarterback. He's a senior. He knows what he needs to do. He knows the task at hand, and, and I don't think that'll be a problem. His focus will be there. Coach, this feels like a ball game. All right, thanks, Larry. Brad? There is Ken Dorsey, his final appearance in the Orange Bowl. Miami won the toss and deferred. It's 78 degrees. Forecasters for showers. You might have seen on the camera lens as Swanee talked to Larry. Some sprinkles coming down right now. The kick out of the end zone as Virginia Tech will have to work from its own 20 yard line. And the guy that'll lead him out, the quarterback who played so well when we saw him earlier this season against Texas AM is Brian Randall. And he adds a little bit of an added dimension, Bob, that uh, they didn't have this time last year. Well, he could run the football. It's, uh, last year, uh, Noel, who was a quarterback, he couldn't run it. This guy's 7-3, and, and you're right, Brad. He played very well at AM. From the 20, first snap of the ball game is a tight end. Jeff King swaps to the right side. Lee Suggs is the tailback. He'll get the call right into the thick of that Hurricane defense, and they swarm him under after a gain of about a yard. The Nivea for men starting lineup. Here's the group up front. Jake Grove, they say, is about as nasty as you'll find in the Big East. Davis, Gibson, Owens, and Martin join him. Two of them seniors on the front wall. Suggs, the senior captain, is the tailback. Eastlick leads the way. King, the tight end. Wilford and Witten are the wide receivers. And Ernest Wilford is their big play guy if they go to the air. But there's Jake Grove. He sets the tone inside. That's the top of the line. The bottom is the right tackle. Martin is a true freshman going against McDougal. Out of the shotgun. Here's Suggs trying to take it wide, and the Canes defense brings him down. This time it's for a loss. Jerome McDougal led the way from his defensive end spot. Here's how it looks in this group, all seniors. Green, Walters, Joseph, McDougal up front, and they're deep with their second line. Vilma's the leading tackler, flanked by Williams and McIntosh. The secondary's been surprisingly good. Jennings and Roll on the corners, and Taylor and Sykes are the safeties. Number one in the nation against the pass is Miami defensively. There's the man that has the most tackles. Undersized, but he's ranging. John Vilma. He might be coming on a blitz. He'll back out of it. Randall in the pocket, in trouble. Down he goes. Virginia Tech is three and out to open their series. Matt Walters, one of the defensive captains, was the first guy there to rattle him. You couldn't have scripted it any better for the Hurricane defense. Two shut down on the runs, and then a sack on third down. 
We talk so much about the special teams of Virginia Tech. Miami's not a slouch either. Parrish is back, but Burns is standing in inside his own five-yard line. Miami knows how to block punts as well. Burns, line drive spiral. Taken at the 36. Parrish with a dance. Now comes to the near side. Got a wall. Down the sideline. Spins back inside. He steps out of bounds, but a great return. He might be the smallest guy on the field, but he may be the dangerous. Penalty marker down at the end of the play. 47-yard kick, a 42-yard return. He literally danced for about four seconds trying to find a wave of blockers and finally got him. Miami, 15 yard penalty from the end of the play. First down. Still a first down, but a 15 yard penalty at the end of the play against Miami. This is how Roscoe saw things. Hey, just looking around. I'm waiting for some friends. Nobody's coming at me, and that's what Virginia Tech does. They get down, they hold their position, they don't commit. That way they don't miss blocks. I don't see any problems yet. Right there. The last shot after he stepped out of bounds. Yep. And it's hard to blame the player trying to come over to block him. I don't think he knew he had stepped out. Yeah, that's, 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 you're right. But they start at the 36. Do they want the quick strike? Dorsey down the middle. Inside the 15. Andre Johnson. And already Miami inside the red zone. 24-yard pass play. Kenny Dorsey. 37 and 1. It's just phenomenal. He owns all the passing records, and there have been some good ones that have played quarterback here. We're not suggesting that if Dorsey wasn't there, that Miami wouldn't have won 37 of those games. They may have won 33 or 32. So, I mean, they've got other quarterbacks that can, but Dorsey, when you, sometimes when you need a quarterback to make a play or not to make a mistake, he's been there 37 out of 38 times. First down, goes again to Johnson. Tiptoes out of bounds at the five. Nivea for men's starting lineup, and we better get through it, or the Canes are going to be in the end zone here. Up front, Shirko, Haji Razuli, and Brett Romberger, the seniors, Joseph Myers and Carey join them on the front wall. McGahee, the tailback. Hill, the fullback. Kellen Winslow will be big today. We expect it. Tight end Johnson and Parrish are the wide receivers. And Kellen Winslow, the leading receiver coming into this game with 44 catches. That has been matched now by Johnson with back-to-back -back grabs. McGahee, left side. Got down inside the two. Sandage made the tackle. He's one of the four up front with Colas Lewis and Adibi. The linebackers, they got Vegas Robinson back a couple of games ago. That's helped. McKee and Manning join him. Manning scored a touchdown last year in this game. Hall, Hardy, Pyle, and Whitaker is the secondary. Two freshman defensive uh, tackles in there ahead of Robinson, the linebacker. One's a true freshman, one's a redshirt freshman. First and goal, Miami. Their opening drive. McGahee puts his head down. Got close, but not quite. McKee made the tackle, but he's about a foot away from the goal line. McGahee, number one rusher all-time single season rushing mark. Almost 1,500 yards, and he's already set a single season school record for rushing touchdowns with 21. Both those records belong to Edgerton James before number two came along this year. Looking for his 22nd touchdown, possibly. Second and one. He's got it. Touchdown, Miami. Mugahe, his 22nd rushing score of the year. Just like that, Bob. Well, they had great field position from the punt return by Roscoe Parrish. You give a good offense only uh, less than half the field to go on their opening drive, and look out. Seaver's extra point is good. As Bob said, short field. Didn't take long. Never seems to for the Hurricanes. They're on the board already with 11-13 to go first quarter. They lead by a touchdown. The Nissan scoring drive was a short drive. 36 yards in a minute and a half following the punt return. 
And that minute and a half seems low. Average drive time for Miami, a minute 54. 34 drives under two minutes. 34 of 60. 17 of them touchdowns. Seavers kick. This one's returnable. No, it's not. Richard Johnson saw it take a bad hop at about the three and let it go. So Virginia Tech's defense went the wrong way the first time they got it. This is what the Hokies want to do. They want to control the game with the run. Take some time off the clock. Make first downs. Defensively, hassle Dorsey. Make him move his feet. Get him out of the pocket. And score on special teams. They're not going to win this game without a score on the special teams. And our 1-800 call ATT game solutions. First down again. Virginia Tech now their second offensive drive. From the 20. Coming up throwing, not to the fullback, and Eastlake's got it. Randall, good throw as he rolled out, got about five. Second and five. Virginia Tech, here's the option Bob talked about. It sucks on the corner, and he's got the corner and the first down. You knew you'd see that play early. Run out of bounds after he picked up seven. Sean Taylor made the tackle. This was one of the only two or three good running plays that they had in the game last year. Randall's just going to come down, option off the defensive end, kind of throws it early. Nice block by Eastley. Exactly, and Suggs outruns Green, number 55. So a first down, and Virginia Tech looking to calm down a little bit. Eastley led the way that time, and he'll have a new guy behind him in Kevin Jones. First down, Hokies at the 32. It's a draw play to Jones. And Jones stood up. After a gain of about two, Jamal Green was there to make contact with D.J. Williams, the outside linebacker. We've just seen a couple of uh, plays that you're going to see all day in their game plan. The option and the draw. Set up like a pass, let the pass rush, let the defensive linemen separate themselves, find some spaces, and then get in there. There's the offensive breakdown. Look at this right here. They want to run the ball. They don't want to throw it. Second down and eight. Opening quarter, just five minutes old. Miami already leads by a touchdown. Randall, play action, lost it out for his fullback incomplete. And that play wasn't too good looking from the get-go because the play fake had nobody thinking about a run. And Randall ended up on his backside. William Joseph put the pressure on. Bob and Brad, I talked to Randy Shannon before the game, the defensive coordinator for the Hurricanes, and he said third down is going to be critical for them. They want to force Virginia Tech in a lot of third and long. He's going to bring nine men up, something he doesn't normally like to do, and he'll play a lot of nine men punch in this ball game. All right, it's running well, only a 37% team on their third down conversions. They've got a long one here for third and eight. And now it's Randall trying to change things up at the line. It's a noisy place to do it. Option again. He'll keep it this time. Lost the ball. Fumble. Who's got it? Miami. Alfonso Marshall with a fumble recovery. You can't turn the ball over on the road against Miami and expect to win. Third and eight, a passing situation. They go to the option. That's okay, just hang on to the football. Miami is not good at taking the ball away this year. They're 92nd in the nation in turnover margin. Last year, they were number one. McDougal's the guy that put the hit on Randall from behind. And again, a penalty after the change of possession. Backs Miami up inside its own 45. Unsportsmanlike conduct on Miami. They are last in the Big East in penalties, or should I say first? <laughs> well, they're the eighth most penalized team in the nation out of 117. There's only seven that are penalized more than Miami. First down, would have had it at the 42 of Virginia Tech. Instead, from their own 43. Draw play, here goes McGahee across midfield. Down to the 49, a pickup of eight. A second down, long two. Dorsey to throw. Deep sideline, Andre Johnson's wide open, and he's gone. Touchdown, Hurricane. Forty-nine. 
yard touchdown strike. Somebody blew a coverage. And they fooled him with the formation. They lined the fullback up as a wide receiver. And Johnson lined up normally in a fullback spot just off the tight end. Andre Johnson's ninth touchdown catch of the year. It's 14 to nothing, Miami, in the opening six minutes. Larry Coker's team already up 14, thinking about Tempe. The Virginia Tech Miami matchup presented by 1 800 call ATT. First quarter belonged to the Canes, 14 to nothing. And time of possession, that's what Virginia Tech wanted to do is keep the ball. The problem with Miami is it doesn't matter with them. It's that, that graphic is just what everybody wanted. Virginia Tech wanted to control the clock, take time off the clock, make first downs. They've done it. But Miami's up 14 zip. Miami only used two minutes and 10 seconds combined for their two scores. This is the 12th play of the Virginia Tech drive, though. At the Canes 10, Randall pump fakes and now takes off to the end zone. Did he get there? Not quite. Sean Taylor lifted him up at the one yard line. He's taken some hits today, running with the football, but he's got him down close now. Bob said earlier in this drive that started a long time ago that this was an important one for Virginia Tech, and now they're close. I like this. He pumps Vilma and the linebackers, the middle linebackers, take off to get the screen. There's nobody in the center of the field. That's what a running quarterback gives you, a little extra dimension. Lee Suggs says scored in 25 straight football games. Not this time, though. Dropped at the one. Will Fork again on the inside of that defensive front. The big guy at 350 pounds. There's Big Vince. <laughs> Uh, he's a good one. He is. You know, they lose their top six. Well, six of their top seven. They lose six fifth-year seniors, but not Will Fork. He is the only one back. That whole defensive line will be rebuilt next year. Again, a power eye look. At the one. Here's Suggs to the end zone. No. Did he get there? Yes. Sean Taylor ran him out, but he hit the pylon, and it's touchdown Virginia Tech. His 18th rushing touchdown of the year. He kind of relaxes here at the end, thinking that he saw a lot of green space and it was going to be easy until Sean Taylor was there. Too much speed to relax at any time in this game. 26th straight game with a score, his continuing NCAA record. Carter Orley in for the point after. Snaps a little wide, but the kick is good. Go back to the last play. Suggs is going to take a little option and run around in. Watch 26, Sean Taylor. He's going to mirror him. Taylor kind of relaxes at the end. He sees all that green space. Then he has to stick the ball out at the end just to get it in. And he was in, capping off the Pontiac scoring drive of 86 yards. Good looking drive. 14 plays, almost seven minutes. And they had a couple of key third downs on that drive, and they passed for them. Randall got one to Jones and one to Humes on third downs that kept it going. Big drive there to answer. Jared Payton runs up on the kick return. And Payton up the middle and out to the 30-yard line. At the Orange Bowl in Miami, where it's a ball game now, 14-7, to after Virginia Tech's long scoring march. Big Winston there at fullback. Here's McGahee trying to cut back. And got back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Mike Daniels, the linebacker, made the stop. Eric Winston, the big tight end, 87 there, is a true freshman, is really impressed. And to get more playing time, he's spending part of his time at fullback, especially with the injury to uh, Kyle Colby. Not only will Rob Chudzinski tell you, but his teammates will tell you he's one of the smartest whips on the whole team. He knows everybody's position. And, and as is Kellen Winslow, the guy in front of him, uh, he's a very bright guy also. Second and ten. Straight up the middle is McGahee. And almost snapped it out for a first down. Crawford made the stop after he got about nine. Third down and inches. And it's McGahee trying to go wide for it. And he just at the end squirted through all the hokey tacklers. And he got the first down by about a foot. Mm -hmm. 
And on first down, Dorsey pumps one way and comes back the other, and a nice play to break it up. Incomplete, it'll bring up second down. And the architect of the perfect season, 17 and 0. Don right. Shooter, Coach, good to Brand see you. Brad, good to see you. Robert, how you doing? I'm missing that money, Coach. <laughs> that money's part of golf, that, that though, right? Golf money, oh, yeah. Golf money. <laughs> Send a cab for me, okay? <laughs> In the Pro Football Hall of Fame, the winningest coach ever. And, and, and Don, you know about, uh, Bob mentioned earlier, trying to win a game to get to a championship game on this field. And sometimes the one to get there is harder than the one once you do get there. Right. And there's a lot of pressure on the Hurricanes, but they're such a great football team, and it's been a tremendous year. And you know they jumped out ahead but now it's a ball game 14 to 7. Larry Coker has done such a tremendous job and it seems like this uh, team and these kids are a reflection of what he's had going here. Yeah I like everything that I've seen and heard about Larry Coker and, and, and the way that their team has responded and uh, you know the class act that they are it's just a. Uh, it's a pleasure to see that down at the University of Miami. Well, you know, not only did, was he a first-year coach, but his offensive coordinator, Chudzinski, and his defensive coordinator, Randy Shannon, were also new first-time uh, coordinators. So all those uh, coaches down there were in different positions they had been in before, and they won every game. That's why I think it's so important that you give Larry credit for what he's done. I think too many people assume that he took over a great program, and uh, it's just been pushing the button. Yeah. But he, he's done a great job of coaching and molding this team to his personality. Well, I think you have to give some of the credit to Butch Davis, who right. really came in in the mid-90s and turned the program around. They really cleaned it up, and then Butch has just took off and ran with it. Now, I don't know how much credit you need to give the coaches. I think it's all done. <laughs> I knew he was going to bring the quarterback into it pretty soon. <laughs> well, yeah, agree. Bob hasn't changed a bit. No, he hasn't. He hasn't changed a bit. From the 40 after the penalty, Dorsey deep. Scott Johnson again. And it's first down Miami. Big play wide receiver and a good quarterback. You got to have them both. Don, you had them both. I had them both. I had number 12 doing it for me. And when he got hurt, Earl Morrow stepped in and did a great job. But Dorsey reminds me a lot of number 12 because he's a field general. He runs that team and he knows the offense inside and out. And he makes the play when he's got to make the play. Well, that's what I like about Dorsey. He's not the biggest guy, the strongest, not the fastest or the quickest. That's what I said. He reminds me of you. <laughs> oh, okay, touche. <laughs> it got even real quick. Boy, you're not kidding. Andre Johnson over 100 yards already. Dorsey to him again. Oh. And just overshot him. Had him close. That's the thing I like about Miami is they'll take chances and go down the field. And he's got two great guys to go to, Andre Johnson and Kellen Winslow Jr. I know a lot, of, you know, the Winslow <laughs> name brings back some memories Boy. here in the Orange Bowl. What a game that his dad played against yep. us. One of the greatest of all times in the overtime. And young Kellen is, is an outstanding player. We've seen him uh, a couple of games. We've watched him in practice. He is outstanding. Going to be a great player. All right, and he took his time, and uh, he studied under a good tight end last year. Now it's his turn. Yes. Kind of follow Jeremy Shockey around like a puppy. Rob Chudzinski said, and he said, basically, Shockey just sort of taught him how to play the tight end position. Coach, I want to ask you, I've asked Bob this many times. In that undefeated season, you had some close calls. Now, Miami's had a couple in the last two years. BC and, uh, you know, they have some other close calls. Florida State has passed. Right, exactly. What was, uh, you remember the closest one you guys had? Well, I think it was our third ball game against Minnesota at Minnesota. We're down by 10 points uh, late in the ball game, and yeah. we had to have two scores to, uh, to win it. We're down by eight. We got the field goal first. They got the ball back and took it in for a, a touchdown drive. Miami trying to get another touchdown drive going here. Third down and five. Paris in motion toward the ball. Dorsey over the middle to McGahee. Trying to get to that first down marker. I think he got there. Delangelo Hall made the stop, but McGahee so shifty right at the end it looked like he picked up the first That's down. That's one of the nice things about McGahee and why he, I think, is one of the top running backs ever to come out of the University of Miami is because he does it all. He's got the running game. He's got the speed. He catches the football. He came in today. He's had uh, 22 receptions Ooh. coming in, and he can block. Yeah, he's complete a, back. He's a guy like uh, Jim Kick back right. in our time where he can pick up a linebacker who is blitzing. So first down, Winston's in because Kellen Winslow just limped out a moment ago. The drive has gone over four minutes and 52 yards so far. Play action. Dorsey going to the end zone. And going to have a pass interference call on Willie Pyle. He never turned around to look for the ball. It was intended for Ethnic Sands. 
Schultz, the inside receiver, the slot receiver, going to go straight up the field. Pile number 35 is going to pick him up. Never sees the ball, as you said, Brad. I don't know about that. That's pretty well, Bob, Bob, let me tell you one thing. Ethnic Sands wasn't really looking for that ball. He was coming down the middle of the field, looked back into the backfield when he saw the ball, then all of a sudden got a little burst of speed. This ball is imminently catchable, and I question the flag. Yeah. Well, you know, it, it was a safe throw by Bray, by uh, by uh, Dorsey because he knew the receipt the uh, defensive back wasn't looking, and the receiver was, so he could just throw it up there with the confidence that the receiver would knock it away if the defensive back turned around. So with a penalty, it's first and goal, Miami, at the four-yard line of Virginia Tech with 9:32 to go in the half. Miami leads by a touchdown. Extra tight end in there. Winslow's back. The handoffs. McGay. He's in. Touchdown, Miami. What a weapon. As he continues to pile on the rushing touchdowns, his 23rd of the year. His own ongoing record. The thing I like about the drive is when Virginia Tech came right back. It, Turned the game to 14 to 7. They had the answer. Miami answered, went right down, say, hey, all right, we're going to go down and score. Extra point is up and good. 9 27 till halftime. Defending champions have won 33 in a row. They're looking for number 34 here at home. Hey, this, this Orange Bowl brings back so many great memories. And in the way that the crowd is right on top of you, right. they're in the game. Yeah. And you don't find that in a lot of stadiums. And I think crowd noise was invented down here in the Orange Bowl. Yeah. The game against uh, Jaworski when he was a quarterback. And, 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 and one other thing was the heat. The heat is certainly you know, a, a real. Fumble. Miami might have another one. Starting to unpile bodies. They do. Jones put it on the ground. And McDougal's the guy that scooped it up. And they don't need to help Miami. Frank knows that. McIntosh made the hit. Suggs never fumbles, it seems. Jones put it on the turf. That's two turnovers and a punt return for Miami that put him in field in, in touchdown short range. Both turnovers in their own territory. And Coach Beamer can't believe it. He just can't do it. Not against this team, as they might try to score right here at the 35. Dorsey dumps it off. McGahee, nice cut, left one man holding air, and he's out of bounds at about the 19. He does it all. It's just a well-designed play. He wanted to go deep. He looked at his options deep, and then at the last minute, when everything was covered, take a look at number two now. He's going to look downfield. Everything is covered. Number two is sliding out right here. He's just going to give him the ball with all that space and let him do something. Whoop. Whoa. The key is the protection. He had all day to sit back there and look downfield and wait for the, uh, the drop-off. Kenny Dorsey's played. 38 games as a starter. He's never had a grass stain on his butt, I don't think. <laughs> Here he is, play action, going to the end zone to Johnson. Just overshot it. Had him by a step, and Kenny knows it. <laughs> and you see the reaction of Dorsey, and you know why? Because he had to throw it real early, because the, the, the area that he was throwing to, he had to throw it a long way, and to get it there, he had to let it go long before Johnson made his move. And when you do that, you just kind of guess him where he's going to come out of. Miami's possessions, three touchdowns, one punt, and they haven't used much time on anything. And Johnson keeps getting open. Yeah. Every time you look up, he's open. He's attempted seven passes to Johnson, has Dorsey. He's caught four of them. McGahee, this time, showing his power. <laughs> Whitaker made the tackle. Billy Hardy lost his hat trying to make the stop. Pickup of seven for McGahee. You know, it helps to have a great back. We talked about you having a couple of great quarterbacks, Coach Shula, but uh, you had a backfield too that wouldn't quit. 
Well, that was one year they both were over a thousand yards. Zonka and then Mercury Morris was right at the, at a thousand. And Jim Kick stepped in and helped us when we needed help there. That was the beginning of situation substitution. He's using the third down guy. Right, using the best guy uh, for the situation. At the 12 yard line, Miami trying to drive to another score with 725 left in the half, third down and three. McGahee again waits for his blockers. Now he breaks free, first and goal. Brandon Manning saved a touchdown. This looks like a team possessed trying to get to Tempe. Gahey, there's a, several opportunities to tackle Gahey, and he doesn't go down. And Brad, you're absolutely correct when you talked about McGahey waiting for his blocking. Two plays in a row. He came up to the line. And it's almost as if he slowed down to let the blocking form, then made the decision, and he gets the great yardage. And it is first and goal at the three. McGay, he's got two already today. This time, not quite. Brought down at the line of scrimmage. You know, 30 years ago, the Miami Dolphins weren't 17-0. They were 12-0. You had just beaten New England 37-21. I know you did that week at a time, Coach, but when did you say, holy smokes, man, we have won every game here. We're rolling. You know, I thought when we got into about the 14th or 15th game, and then people started to talk about, you know, nobody else has ever done it. Then it became important to us, but it wasn't more important than the fact that we wanted to get to the Super Bowl and win the Super Bowl. We didn't want to be in the Super Bowl like the previous year and not win. Penley markers down before the snap as Miami tried to get three wideouts and sneak everybody out to the outside. And the flag down. Timeout, Virginia Tech. And before the snap, Virginia Tech got the timeout. Second down and goal for the Hurricanes. McGahee on a counter, and he's in. Touchdown, Miami. <laughs> McGahee continues to add to the touchdown totals. And it is 27 to 7. Three today already for McGahee. This time from three yards out. And again, it followed the fumble recovery by McDougal. Turnovers, as Bob said, you just can't do it against a team this good. And it's 28 to 7. Our aerial views courtesy of the Goodyear Tire and Rubber Company with Goodyear's Blimp Stars and Stripes, continuing 77 year tradition as the aerial ambassador and icon of the 102 year old company. Get some great shots above the Orange Bowl. Johnson from the six. Richard Johnson had a nice return last time. He's got a better one here. Look out. Seavers is a man to beat, and he's got him. Johnson trying to take it all the way down the sideline inside the 20. Touchdown. No. No, he's out at the one foot line. <laughs> That's what Virginia Tech does. When you think they're down and out of it, the special team just jumps up and scores one. Actually, they're going to spot it at the four, I guess. That's where they put their foot down. But he put his foot down 92 yards to get there. Boy, did they need that. Take a look at the blocking up ahead. He's got the patience to let the blockers do their job and the speed when it's his turn to run away from them. And then right as he got inside the five, Glenn Sharp just got enough of them to knock him out of bounds. Longest kick return for Virginia Tech this year. First and goal. Option. Randall. Nothing doing there. And it's raining. McIntosh made the stop again. It is pouring. Under six minutes in the half, but an opportunity for Virginia Tech to climb back into this thing. If they can get a touchdown, it's second down and goal. Look for Miami to have all 11 guys up to the line of scrimmage. They're not going to expect a pass here. Expect an option one way or the other. Suggs, the tailback. Randall throwing a fade. Wilford trying to come down with it. It's broken up. Sean Taylor was with him. Wilford is their go-to guy. He is 6'4 and 217 up against Taylor. He got his hands on it. He sees it whole, the whole way. The ball was a little bit underthrown, but not a lot. It's a good throw by Randall. 
And you can bet ever since last year when he dropped that two-point conversion, although this isn't the same circumstances, he was looking for another opportunity just like this to have a positive impact for his team. He you wanted that. that. You got that right, Swanee. Third down and goal. The wind is picked up. So is the rain. Randall getting some heat. He got rid of it. Touchdown. Got it to Sean Witten. That was a great improvisation by the quarterback. He wanted to throw it back across the field. That's Witten's first touchdown ever. You talk about picking a good time. And he's happy about it. Sean Witten came in, 19 catches, but no scores. And the redshirt freshman from Oakton, Virginia, has got him in the end zone. Worley for the extra point. It's up, and it's good. Back and take a look at this. He's trying to hit the tight end on a little sneak across the field as he rolls out. Now watch what's going to develop. The tight end sneaks right here. This is where he's trying to go with it right here. But there's a receiver going across the back of the end zone that he doesn't see. And the one he ends up throwing it to is covered, but he gets it in there. And my apologies to Sean Witten. He did catch a touchdown pass last year against Syracuse, but this one is his first this year. And it's a big one. And that is a heck of a throw. Sean's brother, Jason, plays for Tennessee. Remember a year ago when Tennessee was playing LSU in the SEC championship a game away from going to the title game and uh oh what happened Georgia obviously is watching this game the dogs are third of the BCS they play Arkansas in the SEC title game tonight in Atlanta from the six yard line Garrett Payton again first down Miami from its own 26. Dorsey rolling and throwing and completes it to Parrish. Short gain of about 24. You see Kenny Dorsey maybe prior to that snap has a wrist brace on his left hand that uh, happened a couple of games ago. They have not made a big deal out of it. It's his non-throwing hand, but it has given him a few problems. Hey, he's 37 and 1. He's 6'5 and probably weighs 192. <laughs> He's thin as a rail. He'd be a little heavier if he got some different numbers, a zero. The one-one yeah. one make him look small. Yeah, that's true. And he's never been hurt. He's never missed a start at the University of Miami. He gives it on a little Statue of Liberty looking play to McGahee on the left side. And McGahee got out to about the 33 yard line. It's going to bring up a third down. I yeah. like Virginia Tech, Brad. Excuse me for interrupting. Down 28 to 7. They're getting they're getting it. You know this game could be a blowout here and finally they just come back and say hey, our strength special teams. Let's go down and get one and they did it set up the touchdown pass. And now they're really looking for a third down stop defensively as you look in on the 32 yard line from way up above from the Goodyear blimp third down and four. Our takeaway would be good. Uh, Virginia Tech led the conference in interceptions with 20. They were plus eight on their turnover ratio today. That's been Look scored. Out. Here's a sideline streak. Roscoe Parrish cuts back inside. One man to beat. Here comes a whole herd of Hokies. A whole flock of them, I guess. They bring him down at the 10. He almost took it. I'll tell you. Yards. You got to hand that to Dorsey. There's a little pump and go. Earlier, we talked about if Dorsey would have thrown it to the receiver, D'Angelo Hall would have taken it to the house. Watch this. Now, top of your screen, a little move to the outside. Dorsey had pumped, and D'Angelo Hall, number four, had seen Dorsey's pump and jumped on what the quarterback was doing. That was all Ken Dorsey right there. And the pass was perfect, as you saw yeah. the replay. Never broke stride. 58 yards, a career-long reception for Parrish. Now back to the ground they go. McGahee looking for his fourth touchdown. Another scoring drive. All you had to do was blink your eyes twice and Miami's in the end zone again. McGahee's fourth on the ground. That one took a minute and 59 seconds, Grease. That's and, a long drive. And this defense is pretty good. I want to tell you, they're like, they're ranked eighth in the nation in scoring defense. Seavers' extra point is good. 
just under two minutes after the Virginia Tech touchdown. Miami's back in the end zone and they lead 35 to 14. You got a flag. Holding on the offense. Ball be replayed from the 13 yard line. So the extra point's going to be a long one now for Seavers on a holding. A coach trying to ignite his troops. He'd like a blocked extra point, anything to try to give new life back. Every time they look like they're still breathing, Miami steps on their chest. Extra point is still good. Virginia Tech took over at its own 20 yard line with 316 left. And now with 49 seconds left, they're in the 12th play of their drive. Boy, if they could get a touchdown somehow here. Yes. That would be huge. Yes. Any kind of score would help, but if they could make it 35 21, then yes. they're in the hunt. And of course, Miami's defense is well aware of that. Look at all the canes up close. Randall throwing for Wilford and he's got this one. There's the big catch he was looking for that Lynn talked about earlier. It's first and goal Virginia Tech. And it's to his goal to guy Wilford the leading receiver and the leading touchdown maker comes in with a nice but now they're inside to 10 do some business. We alluded and Lynn did to what could have been for Wilford last year and as you saw the beginning of the game he's the one that couldn't handle a two point conversion pass last year that could have sent this game a year ago to overtime first and goal for the Hokies Rando quarterback draw no going down for a loss and trail roll had that one all defended Frank Beamer is not happy because he had it inside if he could have gotten away from an trail roll Little corner blitz. Another timeout, Virginia Tech's final one. To come from the right side. Nice, sure tackle. Wrapped him up. Sophomore out of Homestead, Florida, with a big defensive stop. That's what we said one of the keys for Miami defensively is you have to tackle. Like trying said, to keep the football dry right now. The rain is picked up again. He is big, 6'4. It is raining. He comes out to the near side, the bottom of your screen, with three wideouts the other way for Randall. Second and goal at the seven. Randall rolling right, throwing that way, but it's over everybody's head. Jonathan Vilma is the guy that put pressure and hit. Randall and he's still not up. He's checking to see if everything's still in his mouth other than his mouthpiece. You think if you'd rolled out you'd have more time. That's why they do this with the Vilma the middle linebacker. He's got such speed. And Grant Knoll is thinking about grabbing a helmet. I don't know this this hit in the NFL may have been called helmet to helmet. Well, you could see Vilma just coming in like a missile. We saw him with a couple of these kind of hits in the Rose Bowl last year. Watch this one. Boom. Oh. Yeah, I think they get more protection in college foot in the pro football than they do in college I, these days. I agree with you, partner. And so, lo and behold, as they check uh, apparently a bleeding lip or a loose tooth. We did the last one in slow motion. We'll give you an idea of the impact here. Knocked him halfway out of Dade County. And here's the guy that played the game last year and was intercepted four times as a starter. Hasn't played much because Randall's been the man. Not not easy coming in in this situation. Third and goal at the seven. The senior Grant Knoll in the lineup. Going to throw a fade to the corner. Wilford goes up and gets it. it. Touchdown. Took it away from him. That's that's what he wanted. Wanted to make up for last year's ball game, and it's in the same kind of corner over there. And it's to the same quarterback. Yeah. From the same quarterback to Wilford, and Frank Beamer comes all the way over to congratulate him. And it's the same situation, the corner, it's up there, and he just went up and took it away. And watch, 
I got to tell you, I'll jump in here after this extra point to tell you what the conversation was as they came back to the sideline. Extra point is up and good. 24 seconds. Swanning. He came over to the sideline, and Wilford was saying, everybody, I told you I wanted the ball. I told you I wanted the ball. Most important, all the things he went through all of last year, even to the point where Spike Lee had been on campus and pointed out to him was he is a guy who lost the game for Virginia Tech, and he had to endure all of that. He says, I want the ball. Give Frank Beamer the credit. In a critical situation as a head coach, he didn't shy away from giving Ernest a football. He was one of the first people on the sideline that over to Ernest, gave him, shook his hand, and just pointed to him, knowing that you're the man, you've got the opportunity, and you'll come through for it. This is so important, not just for the football game, but for the character and the personality of the individual in this ball game. Randall's reaction, he comes up for air long enough to say, all right, and how about Grant Knoll, who comes in as cold as a South Beach drink on the street, throws one <laughs> pass, and it's a touchdown. How about that quarterback, huh? How about that quarterback? I mean, that wasn't too easy. You said this is a tough spot. Remember, this kid hurt his knee just days before the spring game. Had arthroscopic surgery in his left knee in September. He was the starter last year. Brian Randall came in. He never got another chance. For him, it's been as tough a year probably as it has been for Ernest Wilford. And he comes in, throws one ball. It's a touchdown. And Virginia Tech is still in the ball game. Well said. 24 seconds remaining in a half. Got a wild one going on in the Orange Bowl. Line drive that hit one of the up men. And it's a tight end. Winston and Winston got out to about the 30 yard line. Our athletic trivia question in November against Syracuse, Brian Randall, 504 was a big East record. Hold the who holds the Hokies all time record for passing yards in a game, Swanee? Well, yeah, you know, this is a wild guess. I'm going to say it's Randall. All right, Bob, I guess you get to be next. I know this answer. By Don Strzok. Don Strzok in 72, the same year yeah. as you were a pro yeah, that's against my man. Houston. 527 yards. He's for the head Strzok. coach right now of uh, FIU right here in Miami. So everything is uh, 30th year anniversary related here today as Kenny Dorsey takes a knee. Final play of the half. It's been an exciting one. Miami, every time Virginia Tech made a push, came right back. Virginia Tech's probably got to be happy that it's halftime because they just scored a huge touchdown. They don't have to worry about Miami coming back and stuffing another one down them. Let's check in with Swanee and Frank Beamer. Well, Coach, a tough first half, but you guys coming back, putting points on the scoreboard. Adjustments and changes for the second half. Well, we're hanging in there. We've got to tackle better. I'm going to tell you, now, this is Miami team's good enough. We don't need to help them by missing tackles and playing poorly there. But, uh, you know, we've done a couple of good things. we just got to go to uh, get uh, get things right in the second uh, half and like to get into the fourth quarter close. Can you force Miami's offense to kind of focus on one aspect in the ball game? This, uh, Take away the run or the yeah, pass? Yeah, it's hard. McGay, he's uh, really running well. They're blocking well for him. And that's why we're not being very good is making and getting taking a run away and get it to a one uh, dimensional game. Coach, thank you. We'll thank see you, you in the second half. Welcome back, everybody. Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy. Partner, they're two quarters away from the big trip again. Yeah, and they're rolling. You know, they've scored five touchdowns in their six possessions in the first half, but they haven't stopped uh, Virginia Tech. They've scored three of the last four, but this is one half, one half away from a championship game, and I'm sure that's what Larry Coker re reminded them. Virginia Tech has to kick off. That's the bad news for them, and you can bet that the opening possession of the third quarter for Miami could very well determine the outcome of the ball game. So many times that first five minutes of the third quarter is so big. Jared Payton and Andre Johnson will go back and await the Hokies kick. Waller up's got it teed up and the second half underway. Andre Johnson so dangerous as a receiver in the first half. Now here is a return man. Broke a couple of tackles and got out to about the 24 yard line. Let's check in with Lynn. Well, Brad and Bob, as you can expect, Larry Coker's offense, he feels, is running the ball and passing the ball extremely well. He just wants them to come out with the same kind of attitude. On the other side, defensively, they've got to tweak it just a bit because what they want to do is try and stop Randall in the running game. Larry says we've got to tackle better, but we certainly have to stop him. He had over 70 yards in the first half. Brad? 23 0. Best start by a first year coach in over a century. 
Thirty three straight wins hanging on this team. Dorsey deep ball and Johnson's open. Trying to break free of D'Angelo Hall. And it's first and goal Miami just like that. 67 yards on the opening play of the third quarter. The conversation at halftime had to be by Andre Johnson. Hey, I can beat this guy. Just throw me the ball. Take a look here. Every, Dorsey looks to his left. Now up to the right side here. You see Johnson beating uh, D'Angelo Hall. If he would have thrown it out a little bit further, he could have kept going for the touchdown. First and goal at the eight yard line in one play. Andre Johnson says, just throw it to me, I can beat him. And on the other side, Wilfork is the same way. Just throw it to me, I can beat him. McGay, he's got four touchdown runs today. McGay almost had another one. Brought down at the two by Michael Crawford. All the talk about the Hurricanes, about McGahey and about Dorsey. You kind of forget about Andre Johnson. Yep. He's 6'3", 225 pounds. He's an outstanding receiver. He's got 19 career touchdowns, 20 now. He caught one in this ballgame. Remember, he was the co-MVP of the Rose Bowl last year with almost 200 yards and two scores. McGahey looking for number five. Not on that carry. Michael Crawford made first contact. It'll be third down and goal. The field goal kickers have had the day off. <laughs> they have. So far, there have been eight touchdowns. Third down. And exactly a yard to go. Opening drive, third quarter. If you just went out to grab a sandwich and came back, 68-yard pass from Kenny Dorsey to Andre Johnson has set Miami up for another chance and another touchdown. Third and goal. McGahee. Right side, another touchdown, number five for Willis McGahee on the day. Number 26 rushing on the season. You don't think they have confidence in that running game? They get down in there, they three times in a row, they just pound it in there. Remember what we said about the opening drive of the third quarter when it set the tone for the rest of the game? That might have been, that might have been it. You sound like a coach, because that's exactly what both coaches told him. 42 to 21. Johnson got the big chunk, but hey, he got the rest. Aji Rizzuli, 74, coming into your picture. Fullback's going to get a block, and then a couple guys get their hands on him before he crosses, but he just it won't be denied. Bucky is 45. Pile 35 gets blocked. The hurricane warnings were out before the game, as they always are here with the red flags, part of the band's tradition. The wind is still blowing, and the hurricanes are still cruising. Three touchdown lead again. This whole hurricane offense came into the game ranked sixth in the nation in total offense and fourth in the nation in scoring. Averaging 41 points a game. The Tostitos chip hats are out in full force. Thinking about how those things would wear in Arizona. Were they handing, were they selling those things or just handing them out? I don't know. We walked, we drove by there. There's a lot of them out there. Some of these vendors and they were just, looked like they were just handing them out. Richard Johnson took a 92-yard kick return earlier in this game. This one from the three, and only to the 22. Leon Williams made the stop. Randall's back in there, though. And it's the fullback, Easley. Out across the 25 to about the 26-yard line. Our Pacific Life game summary statistically in the first half. We didn't have time to show you this. Miami scored too quick. <laughs> Well, Bob Tech is running more plays. They wanted to do that. They wanted to make more first downs, take time off the clock. The problem is the two turnovers led to two Miami touchdowns. Both those turnovers in their own territory, Bob said, turned to 14 points in a hurry. Second down at six. Sun's trying to peek through. 
the showers. Randall on the option keeper into the secondary and loose ball again. And Miami's got it again. Jerome McDougal got all the way back there after the hit by Sean Taylor. Speak of a turnover and another one happens. They have stopped the running backs. They can't stop Randall, but he can't stop fumbling. If he breaks one tackle, he's gone. Sean Taylor just knocks it loose. Again, a fumble in their own territory you, you, for the Hokies. You can't help this Miami offense. You can't give them this great a field position. Does Miami try to go for it in one play? Nope. Draw play. McGahee broke a tackle and got almost 10. He might have. So Willis McGahee with five touchdowns on the ground today. This is the third time that Miami has had a 21 point lead. And each time the Hokies have come back. Okay, he ties a school record with his fifth rushing touchdown, by the way, that's been around since 1933. Quatrin Hill gets it down to about the 30 yard line. Larry Coker knows that in Willis McGahee he has got himself a competitor. One thing about Willis he is so unselfish. Uh, Willis was actually our starting fullback in the Rose Bowl game last year. Uh, Clinton Porter's being our tailback. We, our fullback was injured. Played 70 plays as our fullback to help us win a national championship. And then coming back, having a great offseason, being a great leader for us, and practicing so well. You watch him practice. The practice is just like a game for Willis. You see him run. That's the way he runs in practice. And that's the way he runs in games. Andre Johnson down the middle. Couldn't quite hold that Kenny Dorsey pass. Willie Pyle was there to break it up. And Larry was telling us also about McGahee. He said not only did he play the fullback role and play it unselfishly he said even if he stays in the game and the play isn't called to him he wants to stay in a block for somebody else <laughs> and he says if you put in a back and you bring him out and you run a running play that has got his replacement has to block he'll say did you take me out because you wanted the other guy to block <laughs> That's on that exactly play right he says I can block he just wants to play every down yeah second down and ten and here he comes and there he goes McGahey he's gone six touchdown Touchdown runs for McGahey. Trying to make a Heisman case. Trying to get his team to the Fiesta Bowl. Seavers, extra point is good. 49 to 21. What a show. Our aerial shots courtesy of Goodyear. We'd like to remind you to take all of life journeys on the wings of Goodyear. Captain Tracy Rockhold with us, Captain. Great shots. Nice to have you with us. The sad shot for Virginia Tech is the scoreboard. It's 49 to 21. And we still have a long way to go. Seavers kick. Johnson will take it at the five. Trying to cut outside again, and they've got him bottled up before he can even get to the 20 this time. Howard Clark made the tackle on the special teams. Go back to the touchdown, watch the block of Vernon Carey and Haji Razuli. Those two guys, the linemen, Carey's going to slide down to the inside. Now you got two blocks there. Now this is where he's going to go, right up through here. Rizzuli 74 stays on his man and Andre Johnson outside being covered by D'Angelo Hall. He just can't make it. He just can't react to it. And that touchdown by McGay, he broke a record that has stood for almost 70 years. Single season, single game rushing touchdowns of six. Whistle stop play. And it's a legal procedure against the Hokies. Well, the Hurricanes are just dominant on offense. 
And Ken Dorsey is just doing what he has to do and is happy to allow McGahee to score the touchdowns. They've scored. If you take out this, this one right here where they just knelt down right before halftime, you take that out, they've scored on seven of their eight possessions. Wow. First and 15, Virginia Tech backed up to its own 12. Randall, pressure coming. Going deep for Witten, and he overshot him. And if Randall would have had that one back, he would have taken off up the middle for about 30 yards. There was nobody in front of him. But he was determined to throw it and did have a man open, but he overshot him. Well, you start looking now, I mean, they, they've come back, they've come back a couple of times from 21 points down. They've come back and showed some life. And now Miami just jumps out and says, hey, we're going to jump out. We're 28 points ahead of you. We're going to put our throat, our, our, our foot on your throat and just keep it there. Two touchdowns to open the third quarter, one on an opening offensive march, one following yet another Virginia Tech turnover. Randall flares it out. Jones, nice cut back to the inside. And all he did was get back close to the original line of scrimmage before Jamal Green ran him down. There's the conductor of the Miami ground machine. I know you may have heard it before, but coming in, starting last year, he was behind Clinton Portis and uh, Al Gore. Frank Gore. Frank Gore. Al Gore still behind. Yeah, he. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Al Gore run the football. <laughs> he was counting Chad. He was a third team running back, and Portis went to the pros, and Gore got hurt. Third and 11, Randall in trouble and hammered under a wave of orange. Green, then roll, then friends. Virginia Tech's got a punt. I don't know. Miami's making a pretty good statement here today. Yes, they are. You get them close to that championship game, as we said in the opening, and then you know, one, one more game, and you go, and you don't have to go to Blacksburg like they did last year. Right. You, all you have to do is come out here on your Orange Bowl turf, and you just win here, and you go. They're pretty impressive. Vinny Burns stands at his own goal line, and it's blocked. They got it. They got it, and they've got it. I think Sean Taylor may have blocked it. In your face, Virginia Tech. That's exactly what's being said. You can talk all you want about the other team's special teams, but Miami's got some that are pretty special, too. Weaver came up with it. We'll take another look at the middle. Yeah, right up the middle. Well, that might have been Leon Williams, 44. Leon's right in the middle of your screen. Oh, I think maybe he might have been the guy. There's two guys there. It's hard to tell. Well, they were going after. I think it might have been Quadrant Hill. I don't know. Yeah. From, from down here, guys, it looked like both hands hit the ball. It sure did from here, too, Swanee. The ball, by the way, went one yard. Dorsey looking for a corner route to Johnson. Comes back to his safety valve. Kellen Winslow. Winslow. Spin move. To the one. They haven't needed Kellen today because everything else has been so open, so they haven't bothered throwing it to the tight end. And they were looking for Johnson on that play. He says, throw it to me. I can catch. And he can. And he can run. Remember, McGee's already got six touchdowns. I think they're going to give Jared Payton a crack at it. McGee, he trots to the sideline. First and goal. At the one yard line. Peyton is the tailback in the eye. Wearing a very familiar number 34. He wants to throw back to Dorsey. And it's intercepted. And this is going to be a touchdown the other way. That's gone. Willie Pyle. That's gone. It's going to take it 99 yards for a Virginia Tech touchdown. And it should go the other way. That was an awful call. Penalty markers all over the field. 99-yard interception return by Pyle. You're leading 49-21. to 21. You don't need that one.
The penalty markers were thrown at about the 45 yard line. And Frank Beamer is way out by the hash mark. Letting somebody have it. Apparently, after it was the after the touchdown. Over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness on Miami. Penalty will be enforced on the try. So it was against Miami, not Virginia Tech. Well, I just think that's that's just an unnecessary call. I mean, you try to trick him. I know the players like it. In fact, we saw him working on that play at practice a couple of days ago. Where you hand it off and you throw it back to the quarterback. We saw that in practice, and the players like those gimmick plays. But when you're leading 49 to 21, you can more it's more likely to have something bad happen when you put the ball in a running back's hand and throw it across field than if then it's something good happen. I if you want to score, just run the ball in. Plus, you look at this pass, Bob. It just seemed to come out of his hands very poorly. It did. I don't know if the ball was wet, or I don't know if his gloves were wet, but uh, it just wasn't a good pass. That yeah. penalty was against Virginia Tech, and the extra point is blocked. The referee, and you saw it, he said that the personal foul was on Miami. Yeah. It was not. It was on Virginia Tech. That's why Frank Beamer was upset. That's why the long extra point. That's why the blocked extra point. The Hurricanes are thinking about the Buckeyes. At least their fans are, but we still got a quarter and a half to go. And Dorsey on the give to McGahee. And McGahee finds another opening. And along with us is the head coach of the Ohio State Buckeyes, Jim Tressel. And uh, Jim, first of all, congratulations on a fabulous year. Well, thanks, Brad. It's uh, been a great football season for our young people our coaches and players have worked hard and there's no doubt about it that uh, you're seeing a great football game out there today where you are and I know that uh, you and your team are paying close attention to this one and then barring some sort of miracle uh, it looks like this is the the group you're going to be up against well there's no question Miami is a great football team but you can see there's no quit in Virginia Tech uh, they've been a great football team for quite some time I've coached against coach Beamer back in the old Ohio Valley Conference days and uh, but there's no doubt the Hurricanes are outstanding Hurricanes with a first down here from just outside their own 43 yard line and Kenny Dorsey with a pump fake and wants to go deep down the sideline again and it's incomplete Broken up over there by Garnell Wilds, who's had a good job in the secondary for Virginia Tech this year. You know, Coach, uh, we're seeing a great performance by Willis McGahee today. Your tailback, the sensational freshman that uh, we got a chance to open up the season with in his coming out party. The game we did was something special. A lot of problems, though, with the Stingers there. Uh, we want to ask you about uh, Maurice Claret and his injury status, I guess, right now. Well, the only thing that uh, is good for a singer is to have a little bit of rest. And fortunately, our schedule, we went 12 straight weeks uh, after the Pigskin Classic. And uh, now we have a little bit of rest to prepare, and, and we'll see if he can get healthier. Yeah, Jim, uh, sometimes that rest could work in the other direction. Now, obviously, you're going to have uh, two more weeks off than Miami is. Uh, how do you, what do you do to prepare for that and get the guys back in game shape? Well, we're working hard right now, conditioning. We head into final exams this coming week, and uh, then we'll get right at our game planning. <laughs> and watching Willis McGahee here today and Kenny Dorsey here today, Jim, uh, obviously Maurice was uh, early in the season, kind of in the in the Heisman talk and all of that. Uh, how impressed have you been by Dorsey and McGahee? Well, they're great football players. There's no question about it. Dorsey has won just about every football game he's played, and there's a a good looking throw there and he just he's a heck of a football player and McGahee is extraordinary he's been battled through some adversity and and uh, uh, he's all that they say he is you know Craig Krenzel probably doesn't get enough credit for what he did for you this year you got to have a smart quarterback he's been uh, everything you asked of him well Craig Krenzel is an outstanding player uh, he studies the game uh, he's a great leader and just watching him here in our practices this week he just keeps getting better Cap shot a punt. Finally, Virginia Tech forces a punt. D'Angelo Hall will take it at the 11. Looking for a block. Got one big one. And now he's got the sideline. Yeah. D'Angelo Hall got a block. Cap shot's out of the play. Jared Payton to beat. And Hall is tripped up. Jared Payton saved a touchdown. 
Tell you what, these special teams and these kick returns are outstanding. Vatek has been been known for these for a long time. It might have been Maurice Sykes not Peyton on that tackle, but he saved a touchdown, that's for sure. The wall is set up to our left. He's looking for friendly white shirts. There's a block there, another block there. He's taken two already to the house this year and almost took this one. And that was Sykes, 36, that just tripped him up a 71-yard punt return. I'll tell you, there's no quit in Virginia Tech. And Jim just said that a minute ago, and right now they're thinking touchdown here in the red zone. Well, first and ten for Virginia Tech. Coach, special teams are so special. Frank does a great job of it, and I, I know you guys stress it as well. We really do. Frank Beamer's been one of the leaders in our profession to show people uh, how important the special teams are, and, and I think he's trained a lot of us up in, in that area, and I know our staff works extremely hard on the special teams, and uh, they can make a great, great difference. Jim, how well do you know Larry Coker? No, Larry very well. Uh, he, of course, had coached here at Ohio State, and uh, just an outstanding guy. Had a chance to see him some in the offseason last year and just admire what he's done. He's got a classy team, and he's got a physical team with great balance. Here's a first down at the 18-yard line. Virginia Tech trying to capitalize on the punt return. Randall out in the flat. Looking for the handle as Humes, and he almost caught that one up. Just not real sharp between the quarterback and the receiver. So important to have speed. Here's Sykes, 36 at the bottom of the screen. Now he's just way, he's laying back. He's not thinking he's going to be needed. And then he thinks, well, maybe I will be needed. And he catches it. Just barely. He was down for a long time over there. That's why there was the hold up before the snap from the 18. Now second down and 10. And Randall all wrapped up again. Coach, you know. You never win a championship without a good defense, and you've got that. Well, we really do. Our kids have been playing well on defense, and our staff has done a great job. Mark D'Antonio, our defensive coordinator, has led a great staff there. And I think our kids play hard. They run to the ball. I think they're a real smart defense. And, and in uh, a balanced team like Miami, uh, a team like the folks that you can meet in championship games, uh, you better be focused, and you better be ready to, to handle balanced attacks. Third down and long. Fans come to life for the Hurricane defense. Four wide receivers for Randall. Down the middle, Witten's got it. Nice cutback, first down. It's going to be first and goal at the four. And Sean Taylor saves a touchdown. Witten, who had a touchdown catch in the first half. So Jim, you're kind of used to these championship games, though, uh, at a different level. Well, that's right. I've had the good fortune to coach in a number of national championship games, and it's going to come down to, like you talked about, which defenses play the best, who takes care of the football, and, and those all-important special teams that you were just outlining. Kevin Jones in at tailback. It is first and goal at the four. On the option, Randall, late pitch to Jones. Got a block. Not quite. Drag down the speed of Miami. Again, the story, bringing up a second down and goal. Jim, again, we want to congratulate you on an undefeated season. I'm sure you're looking at Larry Coker going, man, this guy's never lost as a head coach. That's <laughs> well, pretty good. That? Uh, Larry's done an unbelievable job there. And Butch Davis came in, and, and I thought just did an extraordinary job. And Larry picked it right up, and, and uh, they have not missed a beat. Coach, as nice as Columbus is, I think you'll find Arizona to your liking in early January. Good luck. <laughs> well, thanks so much. Good to be with you. Good okay. Luck. Jim Dressel, head coach of undefeated Ohio State. They'll play. Miami in all likelihood unless Virginia Tech can muster some kind of amazing comeback in the Hurricanes. The ball's loose again. I think it's been blown dead. Our thanks to Jim uh, joining us here in the third quarter on a sensational season for the Buckeyes and their fans. They're waiting on the Miami Hurricanes if they can win this one. Our matchup presented by 1-800-CALL-ATT. Virginia Tech trailing Miami but try to pull something together here in the third quarter. The beginning of the third quarter was disastrous. 
as they saw Miami score on offense, then get another turnover and go in again. Third down and goal. They need this one to stay in the hunt. Virginia Tech, that is. Single coverage down here at the bottom to Wilford. No alley -oop. And incomplete. Sean Taylor again was there with him. Give him another chance. Going to bring out the field goal unit. Single coverage. Wilford, number 19, just gets with. This time, Taylor knows what's coming. He gets vision and gets up when the ball's coming. Now, just because they're lining up for a field goal, you can see anything right here. They've got all the they've got all the tricks. They were using them out here yesterday with this field goal team. They've got a shovel pass in here. This is going to be a kick, and it is going to be good. So they add three to cut it to 19. Virginia Tech closes to within 19 with a field goal on Senior Day at the Orange Bowl. 20 numbers up there. 17 scholarship players and three walk-ons playing on their final home game. And they lead 49 to 30. Partner, we got 79 points going. And <laughs> we got another quarter. I, I know. <laughs> That's something. Peyton from the six. Garrett waits for his blockers and got across the 30. Out to about the 33, almost the 34-yard line. And intentionally look that way and pump that way. The impact that a quarterback can have with his eyes and his arms to deceive the defensive secondary. And this guy helps the play action game, that's for sure. McGahee's got 11 more yards. He's got his 10th 100 yard plus game of the season. That is also Miami record. He's rushed for six touchdowns today. That's a single game Miami record. But it's only because of the general behind center. That's right. He knows what's going on. He gets them out of bad plays. He checks into good plays. Here's McGahee cutting outside. He's got more than 10 more again. So starting to pile on the yards to go with a touchdown. 157 yards on the ground for McGahee. Dorsey, if you're checking his stats, 275 through the air and a touchdown. McGahee again. And only about a yard more, and that's it. So this is his third year at Miami. He would have two more years to play if he wanted. And now Jared Payton takes it for about three yards. 49-30, a minute 45 at the 37-yard line. It's third and five. Andre Johnson has been huge today. He's up to the top of your screen. Dorsey directing traffic, and do they get it off? Penalty markers. The one loss to Washington three years ago is what motivates him. He's a fear, fear of losing motivates him more than anything. Here he is in the pocket. Got hit as he threw, and he's intercepted here, though. And here's Ronnie L. Whitaker. And Whitaker, Andre Johnson's tracking him down from behind. I don't think he knew number five was behind him. He was cruising for 50 yards, though, on the return. I've never seen a game that had had so many big plays for one team like Virginia Tech with the punt return and the kickoff return. Now. And they're still down 19 the, points. And, and the interception they almost went all the way. Now the pickoff. Johnson had that in his fingertips, and it was just swiped out of there by Whitaker. Ball was, ball was right there. And another scoring opportunity now for Virginia Tech. Down 19, but first and goal. Just inside the Miami 10. Suggs cuts back. Suggs, touchdown. It ain't over yet. You know, this is the same thing that happened in that game last year that we did in Blacksburg. Miami got way ahead and then just kind of put on the uh, in cruise control, kind of coasted, and Virginia Tech never quit. Kept coming back. That's a reflection of that man you're looking at. They respect Miami. They don't fear him. Rushing touchdown, number two for Suggs. Extra point is good. It's now... A 12-point game. The Orange Bowl has been a soggy place to play today. You wouldn't know it by the scoreboard. 49 to 37. Miami with a first down 
at the Virginia Tech 30 yard line. You got single coverage up the top. They're going to keep running. They're going to keep running. McGahee again. A couple more. Second down and eight. McGahee. They just keep running the horse until he spits the bridle. Yeah, and they're running against nine guys up there, too. Virginia Tech knows that Miami's just trying to slow this game down. Mikel Baki is the guy that made the tackle. You see Romberg and company. You got a ton of guys there. Third down and seven coming up. Romberg looked like his ankle was bothering him coming back no, to the huddle. Nobody in the center of the field. You got single coverage. Dorsey. Near side of Johnson, first down on the sideline in front of D'Angelo Hall. Johnson has uh, been on Hall all day, and he's had his way with him. Dorsey just doing what he has to do. D'Angelo Hall has had a back problem, in, in all fairness. In fact, he's had a stress fracture in his back. Yeah. Kenny Dorsey, Bob was mentioning earlier, Rob Shudzinski, said when I went to recruit him he was coming from a high school basketball game I saw this tall skinny kid carrying a bag of fast food and I said that can't be the guy that's supposed to be the quarterback of the future <laughs> I saw him yesterday he's still as tall skinny kid he had a bag of fast food in one hand and a big coke in the other <laughs> he hasn't changed much <laughs> and we kid Kenny about his <laughs> slender build he, he eats everything he can and nothing seems to happen but uh, whether he's Slight of weight or not, he's not slight of brains, and he knows how to play quarterback, and he's only lost one time as a starter his whole career. Winning his quarterback in Miami history. And, and a very polite young man, because the coach said he offered him part of what he was eating, but the coach felt embarrassed. He was so skinny, he wouldn't, <laughs> yeah. didn't want to take his food. exactly right. Second down at seven at the 10. McGahee tripped up. Nice play. Billy Hardy came from the secondary, made the hit. So that's going to bring up third down and about six. The conclusion of today's game will select a Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. It is third down and seven. But Foster knows his team needs a stop. Maybe they could force a field goal. Maybe they could force one and block one. Who knows? There's a lot of guys up here. Dorsey to Winslow. Touchdown. <laughs> Kellen says, I've been around. That was a great drive for Miami. They reversed the system, the thinking of Virginia Tech. They wanted to take some time off the clock. They did, and they also got the score. It's a great point. Chewed up the time that Virginia Tech would love to have back. And then put an arrow right in their chest on that pass from Dorsey to Winslow. Seaver's extra point is good. 55 to 37. Dorsey's second touchdown pass of the day. A rocket to his all-star tight end. What, what a guy has done for his whole career. Ron Dane at Wisconsin right. uh, had, a, had a, an average year for him his senior year. Randall in trouble. Down he goes. Joseph balls loose again. They blew it dead. And Joseph and Green and Walters, McDougal and Will Fork and all those guys just keep coming and they know number three's got to try to get back there and do something with it. And so it's getting harder and harder on Brian Randall right now. And boys, before we leave this game, I want to just drop this little bit of information in there. You know, there are 13 players on this team have graduated already, and another three will graduate by May of next year. Matt Walters and Jim Wilson 
will graduate with double majors in uh, a bachelor's degree and a master's. Uh, Miami's got two academic All-Americans on defense, Matt Walters and Jonathan Vilma. So they play a lot of good football, but the graduation rate, 71.2%, well ahead of the national rate at 59%. And that's, uh, you know, they bring up a point that really talks about the whole program, and I think Don Shula touched on it earlier, in that uh, they reflect Larry Coker, who has won with class. He was a longtime assistant coach that got this job, and he has said, I'm not the only guy that could have come in here, maybe won a national championship and gone undefeated. But they are a great reflection of Larry, and uh, maybe this Miami group, if I can say, compared to 20 years ago these kids are a lot of fun to be around and I'm not saying the other guys weren't but they were a little more players involved in that group having said that you have to mention Butch Davis is the name absolutely because he was the guy that was brought in in the mid 90s to turn this around this is not your Miami Hurricanes team of the 80s there was a different way of doing things right. around here right. Paul Pasqualoni uh, last week at Syracuse uh, made a comment about the, there was a late play in, in the ball game about a punt a pass on a punt he spoke very favorably of the guys on the other side they do it the right way and I and I, I thought right there that was a uh, big of a uh, Paul to say that here's a handoff to Suggs Suggs got an opening and the senior captain goes inside the 20 down to the 19 yard line and Miami now with two minutes and 15 seconds remaining on their way to their 12th straight victory across the middle Wilford and Wilford broke a tackle inside the 10 trying to drag tacklers with him to the goal line and he got 16 yards that's good to hear and Keith and Dan Fats are waiting to bring you that one following our game Here's oh, no, tell you. it's gonna be a good one draw play Suggs is in touchdown Virginia Tech you know what, what Virginia Tech did in the last two minutes just just shows the character and the drive of Frank Beamer. Yep. What, what a good coach he is, how, how he has built this program. He has done it the right way. A couple of years ago, this team was in the national championship in New Orleans against Florida State. Yeah, with Mike Vick running the show and almost pulled an upset in that one. And he's continued to do things the right way. He's got good athletes. They've scored 43 points against Miami. Now they're going for two here. We will go over the 100 point mark if this two point conversion is successful. And now whistles halt play. And it's going to be a timeout taken by Miami. With 151 left. Three wide receivers to the near side and Wilford to the left and it's Randall trying to zip it in there and he did two point conversion to Johnson is good and the score looks pretty good and you can tell there's probably going to be an onside kick coming up here too with 151 remaining so what Frank is thinking all right we're 11 down we'll get an onside kick we'll get a touchdown and two points and then we need a field goal stranger things have happened that is true. One fifty one away from another title game trip for the Hurricanes of Miami. If you would have told Frank Beamer, I'll give you forty five points. You take it whether you win or lose. I think he would have taken forty five in a minute. Most points scored against Miami in what three years. I know it's the past two years that haven't been that many. And now here comes the onside kick. Trying to pooch it into Neverland. Parrish trying to run up on him. He takes it on one hop. Took a perfect hop to Roscoe Parrish. Today, Chevrolet players of the game. Brian Randall did all he could with both his arm and his legs for the Hokies of Virginia Tech. And Willis McGahee, another record setting day. Six touchdowns on the ground. 205 yards rushing is a career high. 39 carries tied the school record. In recognition to their efforts, Chevrolet will make a thousand dollar contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Been a wild day here at the Orange Bowl. It has been very similar to last year's game in Blacksburg when Miami was trying to get into the national championship game last year. They went ahead, and kind of. Just Slacked off a little bit, then they had to hold on at the end. Not quite as close this year. And the clock winding toward Tempe. 
Virginia Tech will fall to nine and four. They are bull bomb, but they don't quite know where yet. Miami knows where they're heading. Another guy that'll be involved in the future of this football program, Marcus Vick. But he's got some. He's looking around the orange ball. He's going to see. Yeah, he says, I'll see this again. Here's Jared Payton off tackle. Jared Payton into the open field. And he dropped the ball. And he may have covered it. That took a hop. I kind of tells you how sometimes it can be close to going one way and it bounces in the way of the champions. And you know all of his teammates was pulling for Jared to get in the end zone. Hall had an angle on him and then knocks it loose. They move the sticks so all the way down to the 31. I think that's a career long run. It is for Jared. 41 yards he goes. Kenny Dorsey looking to the sideline. Try to get a call to come in. Might be the final play. Well, they are going to be Big East champs. We know they're state champs. They're the defending national champs. And they're going to get another crack at it. Can they add 2002 to the list? They've won five national championships in the last 19 years. They're going to go six. They're going to try six for 20. MPSA La Fiesta. Let the big party begin because Miami gets to go again. They're going to the Tostitas Fiesta Bowl. A chance for another national championship. The house where 22 straight opponents have fallen. 34 straight wins for the national champs, and Swanee is on the field. Coach, congratulations. You've got it. You're headed to the Fiesta Bowl. You got your wish. Your defense stopped Suggs and Jones pretty effectively. Well, we just didn't stop the quarterback. And just a, a crazy game. We talked about it, and our, our players played so hard. I'm so proud of the way they played and just the effort they gave. Because we, we told them there could be some ups and downs, and there certainly there were. Now, we know you have some offensive weapons, and you had the firepower. But are you surprised by 56 points offense put on the scoreboard? Well, a little bit. It's just Virginia Tech defense, because they don't allow many points. But uh, we had a lot of firepower. We had a lot of skilled athletes, and we did a great job of the offensive line. What can you say about Dorsey and Andre and Willis McGahey? Well, I, I can tell you one thing. The man that pulled the trigger on it and kept them together was your quarterback, Ken Dorsey. Congratulations. That was a career day for you this afternoon. Thank you. It was a lot of fun, and uh, you know, the running game really came up big here in the second half, and uh, you know, we had to have that in order to get to the Fiesta Bowl. Was there a moment out there where you thought you couldn't move the ball down the field? Well, we, we felt confident, and we felt like we had a great game plan, and we executed it. Uh, I couldn't be more happy with my guys. Congratulations to you. Brad? All right. The champions remain such. Can they do it two years in a row? We'll find out. But they're going. 56-45 is the final over Virginia Tech.